Hey everyone, welcome to my channel for another exciting and fun-filled video episode on the Passage Maker Dinghy Build series. We got lots to do, so let's get at it. Alrighty then, so the next task is to uh, put the rub rails on the side of the boat here along the side. Now I've already got this side dry fit in place uh, just to, number one, make sure how many uh, clamps I needed and I needed more than what I had uh, so I'd go get some more clamps and uh, then to see and look at how they want you to do it and what some of the challenges are going to be so uh, they want you to keep the top of the rub rail here flush with the top of the boat here which is going to be a, the probably the biggest challenge um, in getting it in now they say that when you install to install it, they want you to uh, put thickened epoxy along the board and then put it up starting at the bow and uh, and then work your way along, along the bow as you put it up, which just sounds like a huge mess to me. <laughs> I don't, I mean, yeah, if you had a couple people, you could have one person stand uh, hold the hold the board while you worked your way along and put the clamps in you'd probably be okay um, But for me is doing it solo is is that I don't think that's a really uh, a viable option to have uh, this uh, this long stick with uh, epoxy all over it <laughs> Waving around all over the shop while I try to get it on so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put it on the boat so I'll go ahead and um, when I put my thickened epoxy on, I'm going to be putting it on the boat. Now, there's a couple things we got to do before we even get there. Uh, first one is, <laughs> yes, no, let's back up a little bit. So, again, the order of operations that they give you in the manual is, I, I, I don't even have any words for it. It's, it's, it's just unbelievable. And maybe it's okay for if you've got a couple people doing it. But for just one person, it, it is not, the you know, order of operations is not even close to being something that should be followed. So number one, the skeg should not go on. <laughs> and the skeg should not go on until close to the last part. And the epoxying on the boat should be, um, uh, you know, down there too. So. So in order to put the rub rails on, now I've got to come on this epoxy that I just put on. I've got to, I've got to uh, scuff up all the way along just so that I can put the thickened epoxy on there because I can't put the thickened epoxy right over this um, uh, clean coat of clear epoxy. So I've got to get that off. And now, and you can see, I've got a, a counterbalance weight in the middle because with the skeg on, the, uh, the boat wants to, to heal over without that that counterbalance there, the uh, <laughs> putting all these clamps and the rub rails on one side, the boat starts to lean over there and then it gets all out of whack. So, uh, like I said, the, and I should have looked at this before, the rub rails should go on before the, uh, the skeg and the skids and the epoxy on the outside of the boat. So it would have been much better to put the rub rails on right after I did the uh, center seat that reminds me too, I've got to put in the uh, antenna mass support somewhere along here while I've got the boat like this too. Um, so yeah, so it should have been center seat, uh, um, a mass support, rub rails, and then go back and do the skeg in the bottom and the skids and the, uh, the epoxy. Uh, but it's too late to, to worry about that now just for, for future, future kit builders. I, that's the way I would do it. I wouldn't like I said, I'd do the center seat, antenna support, rub rails on the outside, and then flip the boat over. So anyways, but uh, we're at, we, we are where we're at, so we gotta get this, uh, get this going. So like I said, I've got to scuff up, uh, so I'll have to take the, the uh, dry fit off and scuff up the epoxy where it is. I've already marked, a, did a pencil mark along the, the whole bottom of the rub rail here. Uh, so that'll give me a good idea of where to go and i think the other thing that i'm going to do is after i after i scuff it all up with some uh, 120 grit sandpaper that then i'm going to go ahead and put a tape line um i'll put a tape line underneath the 
the uh, rub rail here uh, so that it's real, where are we at there? So it's, it's uh, pretty close, not exact, but pretty close. And that way, when I put the thickened epoxy on the boat, I'll know I'll have the uh, tape line there to uh, help guide me on where that thickened epoxy goes. So that's my plan. Uh, today I'll go ahead, like I said, I'll get the, uh, and I'm going to only do one side at a time. I don't have enough clamps and I don't want to go buy another 20 clamps um, to do the other side of the boat at one, the same time. So, so I'll spend the, I'll do the rest of the day. I'll get the, the side scuffed up, get the tape put in, get it all cleaned up and ready to go for tomorrow morning. And we'll come out early, bright and early and put the, uh, thickened epoxy on then for now I'll go ahead and pause and uh, we'll see where we end up at here today and uh, if we don't see show anything else today then we'll be out here bright and early tomorrow morning alrighty then so I went ahead and did another dry fit here of this rub rail and I've got I did, already went ahead and did the, um, the sanding for underneath and then I've also got a piece of uh, tape along the bottom here so somebody remind me when uh, when we're done to take this tape off before the epoxy dries. So that would be a good thing. But anyway, so yeah, so I've got some spots marked here um, as reference points all the way the, along the thing, along the uh, rub rail and the edge of the hole. And the reason that I did that is because I decided that I'm going to put some screws in here while I'm assembling this. So what I've got is uh, I went up to the local hardware pusher and uh, got half inch number eight flathead brass screws. And I'm gonna go ahead and drill a pilot hole here and then do a countersink and dry fit the screws in to make sure that I've got a, a good, re uh, you know, same kind of thing as what we use the dowels for. The, uh, it gives me a good reference and a good spot that I can uh, uh, tighten up the screws and and maneuver it a little bit better I think up here at the at the or back here at the aft end I had to use quite a few I had to use uh, these C clamps in place of the spring clamps to give me a little bit more um, uh, holding power so that I could bend bend this end up a little bit because it's quite a curve here to get the get the rub rail in so i think some screws will help with the placement of it and uh hopefully we can get these in and be back out tomorrow to do this i i think i've got a good i got a good process so i'll i'll start at this end i can lay the rub rail up along the bench over there um, and then start at this end and start working my way down uh, there's a couple spots where I can get to uh, a point where I can leapfrog ahead and just get the, the spring clamps in loosely and then tighten them back up as I go along. So I think it's going to be a chore. I, I thought I was going to use the regular epoxy, but I think I'm going to be using the tropical hardener just because of the time I think it's going to take uh, <laughs> take me to get this, get this in. But anyways, I'll pause here, uh, get the pilot holes and countersink done and then uh, we'll be all ready to go back come back out tomorrow and get this glued in okie dokie then it's another bright and early morning out here i've got everything all prepped and ready to put this rub rail on i think i just need to mix up some epoxy to mustard consistency and get it on the side of the hole here so i'm going to mix up a pretty big batch i think um the manual actually calls for eight ounces i think that's too much um but we'll see I, i'm just gonna mix up a batch and see how it goes well i know i made way too much even though i said i wasn't going to but let's go ahead and get this uh see how messy this is gonna be i think this is uh gonna be probably one of the messier days so I don't see a good way to not be messy.
All right, then according to the clock, I've got exactly one half hour to get this on. I've used the uh, tropical hardener, so 45 minutes it is 73 in here. So, yep, about 45 minutes. Started 15 minutes ago. Gives me a half hour. I did double up my gloves, so if the gloves get too bad, I can uh, just whip off the top layer and have a fresh set of gloves. All right, well, here goes nothing. how this screw is going to work. I did drill out the uh, holes and did a test dry fit with the screws last night. Good deal right in. Alrighty, well that went real quick. Uh, it only took 10 minutes. What the heck am I going to do with the rest of my time? <laughs> I'm going to mess with it. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I do best. Let's see if we can get some cleanup on the squeeze out on the top done. That'll tell us how uh, good we're doing. I think the screws really were a big help. keep the uh, to keep the up and down you know and keep it the the rubbing rail centered and then the clamps to squeeze it together all along the whole thing so I think that worked pretty darn well Now for the real messy one is going to be the underside here. Maybe I ought to go ahead and scrape that off too before I pull the tape. That might be a good idea. All right. Let's see if I can get this tape off now. Alrighty then, I think that's a pretty good job there. I don't think I missed too many spots. Good clean up on it. So uh, yeah, so tonight we'll uh, hopefully this will be dry by tonight. This evening, I can come out and uh, get the clamps off, get the other one ready. The other thing I need to do is to 
you remember we had the mass support that went right here uh, let me get it yesterday I'll show you this closer up once we uh, maybe tonight when I start at it but the mass support is this piece right here and it goes in like this and I had to trim this bottom notch off to fit around the fillet and now now it kind of fits <laughs> mostly fits I put it the right way the, uh, the only thing now is that it it doesn't want to sit square up to the bulkhead this way and also against the bottom uh, on the other on the other side and the reason that is is because and also it's it's almost flush here at the top but it's over just a little bit so I think what I need what I, what happened was is remember I put an extra extra layer of epoxy here and also I never did sand back the epoxy on this or the fiberglass and epoxy on this surface so I just need to clean this up need to scuff it up anyways because this gets in put in with thickened epoxy um, so if I get this all cleaned up then when I do the next rub rail here I should have enough epoxy uh, thickened epoxy left over to install that front piece so anyways um, we'll, we'll pause here and be back uh, tonight to see how the cleanup goes and uh, do some uh, prep for another early morning tomorrow okay then this rub rails had all day to cure so let's see if we can get these clamps off of here I'm uh, think I probably will have to do a little bit of cleanup along this edge here and maybe a little bit on the top i don't really want to do the top now because i just have to come back and do it a second time when i put this other uh this other rail on so let's go ahead and just take uh take this off now and just see what it looks like i'll try to leave the clamps because we'll need them for the next rail All right, well, that actually looks pretty good. It's uh, it's, it's pretty amazing, actually. <laughs> it's got a good, uh, pretty good seam. See a couple spots where it went a little bit high, um, but nothing right, right in here seems to be the worst spot so far. Yeah, up and down here a little bit. The rest of it seemed to be pretty good. Looks like we got a pretty good joint there. I don't see very if any voids at all. So good. So yeah, so I'll go ahead and clean this up a little bit and then get the second rub rail fitted, dry fitted on here. And this time I'll come through with the screws coming into it from the outside here with the brass screws. I've got, uh, yeah, so it's half inch on the inside and I'll use three quarter on the outside to go through both uh, the first the outside rub rail into the the inner rub rail and so that'll be good yep and then if I get a if I if I get the energy then I'm going to go ahead and sand down where the mast support goes so I'll, let me pause here I'll get my uh, sand out sander out and we'll see if we can uh, get this cleaned up well, I had to use just about all of my clamps to get this one in. It was, uh, uh, and actually I had to do it twice. Um, the reason was, is I had here at the, uh, this end, the bow end, I had them lined up. And then when I got all the way down, where is it at? It's right in here somewhere. Yep, right here. Um, you can see the scarf. So I had, I actually had the other scarf is right there. So I actually had the two scarves, uh, uh, the two scarves overlapping each other. So I've gone ahead and and shifted it so that the uh, so that this scarf is forward of that one. So it's all right. So we've got plenty at the at both ends here for the overhang. So and we cut those off uh, once we're once we're done. And I got this. So I hopefully with the screws in now, I won't need all these. 
I won't need all these clamps when uh, when I do the glue up. Uh, so hopefully we <laughs> it goes a little bit easier now that I got the screws in. So we'll see. So anyways, I'll take this off, give it a good wipe down. Um, oops, I think I've got time and energy to go ahead and do the sanding on that mass support. So I think that's what I'll do next. And then I'll get this apart, wipe down and get all set up and ready for tomorrow for another bright and early morning. Alrighty, another day out here in the shed. Just finished mixing up the batch of epoxy. Uh, yeah, so it's actually kind of cool out here today. It's uh, 67, believe it or not and don't have the AC running. So that's a good thing. Um, I did decide to use the Tropical Hardener anyways, just because I like the uh, like more working time. It gives me, regardless that it's, I could probably get away with using the regular epoxy this morning. Um, the other thing, so I do have the, if I've got epoxy left over, then I'll do the mast support this morning too if i can uh if i've got some decent amount of epoxy left over but anyways let's go ahead and get this going and let's see yeah i'm just gonna go past it here this might be a little bit easier now that we're out away from the hull a little bit Alrighty then, let's see if we can get this guy on now. Let's see, I got clamps there, I got my screws ready. I think we're good to go. These three quarter inch, I had to get out the uh, impact driver to get them in here. Just got to clean up, clean up the squeeze out. And hopefully we still got time to get to the mast support. I think most of the bottom squeeze out fell on the floor already. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can get this mass support in. All right, so I did uh, uh, sand this up a little bit last night, and we're pretty close fit. I think it's close enough. Just wanted to make sure it was mostly flush with the top here and, and had some good contact down below. I also put down uh, some lines to kind of guide me when I put this in because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to butter up the uh this edge and the bottom and then slide it in and see how that does the big the only other problem is is that reaching it from the other side i've got i just put that rub rail in so i don't want to disturb it but we'll uh go ahead and see if uh, we can just uh, slide it in there with some uh, buttered up uh, thickened epoxy here all right well here goes nothing 
helps if I put it the right way in. <laughs> All right, now I guess I better check, see if it's square. <laughs> Stop messing with it. All right, well, that's gonna have to be good enough hold it down I'm just going to put a piece of plastic here and a brick and there we go all right good so we're going to pause here come back out tonight and uh, see what it looks like nice and warm today so let's see how uh, how we did here on this mass support oh yeah nice and sturdy a little bit of cleanup oh I did look the manual does call for a fillet around the uh, edges here so like we got that pretty well done got quite a bit of sanding to do up here but that is nice and sturdy so that's good so i still need to take off the clamps from the other side i think what i'm going to do so so anyways they want you to what the manual wants you to do is to uh, clean these up with a round over bit and i'll probably do that at some point but i think i'll just go ahead and switch over and do uh, the other side uh, the two rails for the other side now and then uh, when we get to the paint getting ready for paint and varnish and all that stuff then we'll do the major cleanup of all this stuff they uh <clears throat> they talk about doing the round over on this edge here and that the wood's under stress and to be careful <laughs> so <laughs> i'm a little bit hesitant on doing that but we'll uh we'll see when we get around to it so like I said, the next step is to put the rub rails on the other side of the boat here. It's going to take me a couple days because I have to put one on, let the epoxy dry, put the other one on. I'm not going to film any of that, So, um, but that does mean that maybe Saturday's video may, be, may not come out or it may be a little short. We'll have to see, see how it goes because the next thing after the rub rails is the dagger board trunk slot here on the top for the uh, uh on the middle seat there we got to cut that big slot there so that's going to be fun and then after that we got to do the bow seat and the aft seat so uh, that's going to be a lot of work there a lot of fun so anyways we'll end up this video here wanted to say uh, thanks for watching thanks for your support make sure you're hitting that like button please leave me any comments questions suggestions down below please tell your friends about me and please please subscribe everyone take care and be good